Yo, what's going on you guys? Drum Machine Addicts is back again. And in our recent video, we did an unboxing of the Akai Fire. In this one, we're gonna actually fire it up for the first time and then show you what's happening on my screen as well. So first, it's USB powered. That's the only thing that really comes with it. Um, once you open it up, you'll get this cheat sheet also though from Akai, which just gives you some shortcuts for how to actually use it, right? So now that we have the cheat sheet, We've got the unit, we've got the USB power. Oh, and of course your software download card that also comes with it. Uh, we'll get to that later. Let's go ahead and load it up in FL Studio. So I'm just gonna plug in the USB. Boom, just like that, right? All right, so mine is already synced to the software because I've actually loaded it up before. But what you're gonna have to do when you want to use this in FL Studio is you're going to have to go to options. Then you're going to have to go to MIDI settings, right? So just to kind of reset it, this is what it's going to look like, right? So right now, nothing's working. Um, so the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to move this to port one on your computer. So it'll be, it'll be like right here. I move it to port one. And then of course, to actually get it to recognize there's a controller connected, you have to press enable. So now if you see, it recognizes there's a controller connected, but because I haven't picked the controller type, it's just triggering this drum like, uh, like I have a keyboard set up. So, you know, this may be um, lower on the keyboard than that, right? To fix that, you wanna go to controller type and then you wanna to go to FL Studio Fire. Now notice the actual device just changed too. So the buttons look different, all right? So let's go out of preferences. Let's go out of our MIDI settings, okay? Now, see I press that, the kick drum on the screen lit up too. All four lit up, right? So you may not be able to hear this, uh, just based on how my sound settings are, but I'll play it anyway. Oh, okay. So now we just found out something, right? So the step sequencer is kind of like, uh, like Ableton Live. This is all this is, a step sequencer and a different way for you to go through your patterns and all that stuff. Uh, this channel was actually muted these channels down here were muted as well because the buttons were grayed out. You see what I'm saying? So now all these channels are active. So like I could do like this. Right? So I'm really drum programming on the fly. So you could do that. You can now actually use this once you have this selected. You can go through your browser to like quick select drums, which is dope, dope. Ooh, and ooh, this button lets you go between grids. So like this could be programmed this way. But then I could start on this. Oh snap, okay, all right. So then, Man, that's dope. That's, that is pretty good. All right, so I could get rid of all that. Let's see. Run through effects. Huh. Oh, snap. Okay, so that was the mixer stuff right there. It's channel panning up there. It's channel volume like that. Let's see. Loop the core like that. Yeah, guys. So, I mean, for the uh, purposes of this video, I mean, we pretty much just showed you how to program drums using this thing. And it's actually really intuitive. So, all you have to do is click on here and it'll mirror on the screen. So, yeah. Um, with that said, we'll come with another tutorial that'll actually program some drums the way we want and we'll show you how to build a trap beat with this and then we'll show you some boom bap and some other stuff but uh yeah with that said that's drum, drum machine addicts we're about to sign out uh don't forget
forget to tell a friend to tell a friend so we can keep delivering you content. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at drummachineaddicts at gmail.com or hit us on YouTube. And uh, with that, we'll see you later. All right, peace.